This meeting is being recorded. Is that you or me? That's me. Oh, excellent. Okay. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks a million for coming along. Uh, we had over 70 registered for uh, this Club of Hero workshop, uh, which is fantastic to hear. Um, and this is part of a wider uh, group of workshops and initiatives that we've got going on, uh, kind of spearheaded by Dave, uh, David Denif, that for anyone that has not met him yet, uh, you know, he's, we've been pastoring him everywhere that we can. So uh, we're working on putting together resources for uh, pretty much all of the club roles, treasurer, PRO, chairpersons. We've had the chairpersons already. So I think some people that were on this have been on that already. And we're trying to compile the resources, uh, you know, to make it easier for you guys to take on roles and expand your clubs and stuff like that. So this is going to be one of uh, a few more workshops that we're planning over the next few weeks. The next one, I think, is going to be treasurer. So we'll be putting out details about that in the next couple of weeks. Um, on tonight, we've got uh, David Denif, uh, who's got great experience in club governance, club management, everything club. Uh, so he's going to be uh, giving a couple of minutes presentation about the role of the PRO, some of the roles and responsibilities and stuff like that. He's then going to pass over to Tomas Griffin from Killarney Valley. Now, if you don't know Tomas Griffin, you definitely know Killarney Valley because their stuff is plastered all over uh, Instagram, Facebook, social media. They do a super, super job. So we asked if Tomas would come on and maybe share some of the tips and, you know, different ideas that he's got and the crew that do the PRO work down there have got in Killarney Valley. So he's going to talk about a bit of external communication. And then uh, we've got Michelle Ryan from Goran on also. Um, Michelle is, I'm going to call you an internal communication expert. Uh, so Michelle uh, revamped Goran AC. Uh, she got everyone working on a, a platform called Spond uh, that deals with communication within the club. It makes everything much simpler, you know, has some GDPR implications and stuff, I think, which you might talk about. Uh, makes it easier than managing the WhatsApps. Um, and we've also got Ava on. So we might go to Ava uh, at the end if Ava wants to, to say a couple of words. We haven't got a script for Ava yet, so she's going to surprise us. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, Dave, over to you. And thanks very much, everyone. Thanks for being Shannon. Thanks for the intro. Yeah, as Shane said, this is a series of workshops that we're doing for support club officers of a wider development of a club toolkit and supports for club governance and management. And Shane has said, I'm, I'm very involved in the club, in my own club. Um, I'm, a, I'm a club member of Gorn AC which, with Michelle. Um, I'm also involved in the county board, Leinster, and also at national level on the governance committee of Athletics Ireland. So I've also done this with a number of other sporting organisations and NGBs. Um, so we're well used to this particular area. And, and, the, and the mad thing is that the club PR role across every sport is much the same. It is very, very similar. And what you'll very soon realise, even from the conversations tonight, is that the challenges you're facing as a PRO are the same challenges that everybody else is facing. And the solutions sometimes are very close to hand. And it's a case of picking up a phone to somebody and seeking a bit of advice. Uh, delighted to be joined. As we, uh, The way we've taken these workshops is to have me do a quick intro and then follow with the real experts, the people who do the job. And delighted to be joined by Tomas and Michelle, who are going to give quite different perspectives on how things um, are, are done in the clubs. And then we're going to open the floor for, for, for a question. And this is designed fundamentally, guys, to be a support and will ultimately form part of a club toolkit that we will be putting out to people on how to help people who are, I suppose, a lot of people probably on this call who are old, <laughs> sorry, because I'm really bad, have been PROs for a long time, um, who are new PROs um, who might want to be taking up the role of PRO or considering how do we utilize the role of PRO in our club. So I'm just going to do a quick intro on the general role of the, the PRO, and um, then we're going to follow with, a, with a, the presentation by Tomas and the presentation from uh, Michelle, and then we'll, 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 we'll open, uh, let Ava talk, and then we we'll go to the floor, and we'll be watching the chat as well. Uh, Shane has got the responsibility to keep an eye on the doorway and the chat, so that's, that's his job tonight. Um, I hope you all can see that screen. A couple, maybe one of my, yeah, we can, okay, perfect. So um, the PRO and the role of communications in the club is in effect the main purpose of tonight. And I suppose the, the main thing that the PRO is responsible for is communication and promoting the club and the sport. And inherent in it is obviously the whole marketing and promotion of the club and the sport. Digital and social media is much more pertinent now than it, than it once was and is, and quite rightly. 
And then obviously we still talk about traditional media uh, relations. So that's what we're probably going to take a focus on is these kind of five key areas. So the first aspect that I referred to there was communication and delighted tonight to have two speakers who are going to give quite different perspectives on the role of internal communication and the role of external communication. And the key thing is here is to be effective. And I suppose it's looking at yourself and going, well, how effective are we? And being, being open to looking and seeing, well, how many people are accessing our posts? How many people are actually accessing our Facebook um, page? How many people have gone to our website? Being open to look at how you're, you're getting on and trying to determine how effective uh, communication is. Again, a lot of people, you, you just need to be mindful about uh, who are you reaching out to? Are you reaching to your club members? Are you reaching to a wider audience? Who, who are the target here? And again, both um, both uh, Tomas and Michelle will give perspectives on, on that particular uh, aspect. Obviously, the key thing here is we're, out, we're, we're all amateurs, guys. We're all volunteers. There is a, I know Shane and, and Ava are being paid by Athletics Ireland, but fundamentally, they're enabling us to be able to communicate and to engage people with our sport. And at this time, when our, when our sport is growing rapidly and the number of clubs is growing, we need to provide more supports and to get the message out there about what we do. And it's really about getting information out there about the activities that we do and the role that we're playing. Um, second thing that a PRO would normally do would be the repository for the record keeping. So, you know, knowing, and sometimes that responsibility can be devolved to somebody who's a long serving member of the club who'll be keeping the scrapbooks and the files and etc. And obviously the big challenge when you go to social media is making sure that we're retaining the same thing. And there's nothing better than going into somebody's clubhouse and seeing the photographs and the flags and the people who've gone to the events around the world and putting them all up. And that's some, the PRO plays a role in shaping that. The reports for the media. And again, I know Tomas will touch upon this. The PRO being the central person to do this. And ensuring that the club is presenting effectively. And again, when you go to clubs, I was down in Temple Moor last weekend for the spring trolls. It's great to see what they're doing and the banners and the, and the merchandising that they have out around the field. You can actually clearly see who they're being supported by and what they're getting uh, from the local and how they're engaging with the local community. The role of the PRO in that is to probably be a key enabler and serve on the committee in that role. And this, the, the, the other thing, obviously, is representing the club, being a key point of contact and being that person who answers the phone from the local journalist or from the local radio station or being the person who is the name person on the Facebook page or on who's accessing the Twitter account. And then I think the other role that every, every, everything that is incumbent and upon all of us as officers is to begin to plan for who will replace us. And I think that's a really important thing, which I touch upon again. And again, oftentimes this role is, I mean, there's an awful, of, an awful lot involved in this role. It can be subdivided to a team. So you'd often see clubs who would have assistant PROs who take on key responsibilities. Um, such as maybe doing the media reports, such as being the person who does the record keeping, you know. So there's different, sometimes that role should be broken down, but it should always be managed by one person who is the PRO, who's on that, the key committee of the club. Obviously, when you're dealing with things like digital and social media, it comes with benefit and it comes at risk. But fundamentally, it's about getting the message out there, but being careful about how you do that. And some of the aspects of digital and social media would pertain to, well, what channels should we be using? So you're looking at clubs who are using Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. And um, some clubs probably even on TikTok and Snapchat at this stage. And again, probably beyond me, I don't have a TikTok uh, account. But they, they, are, they are sometimes the key voice of the, the club and the sport. And for a lot of clubs, they are the main and primary mechanism for communication. But it is better to be safe than sorry here. Shane touched upon one aspect there, the whole GDPR aspect and who is in control and who is access to the information being consistent what you're putting out there, utilizing the content. And again, bear in mind that when you're on something like Twitter, it's about getting it out very close to the event. A lot of people, for example, will put up results from events or photographs from events onto Instagram, but being current in that, I mean, that's what the power of social media is enabled that currency. To be timely, data protection, obviously, factoring that in and making sure you've covered yourself there. And then the whole area of obviously child safeguarding and making sure you're covered there, that you're not putting up pictures of children without approval, uh, without explicit approval of their parents or guardians. 
So, and again, the one thing that I've encountered before in other sports, not necessarily in athletics, where multiple people have access to the, say, the Facebook account or the Twitter account, and there could be some strange posts, to put it bluntly, and you need to be able to deal with that as well and how to manage that one. Obviously, the traditional media still plays a role, and it's a big thing in our local clubs, whether it's the parish newsletter or the local newspaper or the local radio. But um, it's about forging the links with the local radio and newspapers, being there to deal with the queries. And bear in mind, the role of the website more and more is the repository of information and probably a lot, obviously, more static than our social uh, media and digital media platforms are. And the other role, of course, is dealing and communicating with the NGB. And I'm sure Tomás can talk about aspects about getting information that goes into whether it's Irish Runner or Anti Athletics Ireland website or wherever. The other big role that the, the PRO plays is dealing with the controversy. Oftentimes, and this is thankfully is not too common in, in, in athletics, but it has happened in other sports where things have gone wrong in the club and you have to be the first person to pick up the phone from a local journalist and going, what's going on here? I saw there's something on, you know, something has been put up on WhatsApp and it's gone around the world, you know, inadvertently. So how do you deal with that one? And the PRO together with the, uh, the committee of the club should have a, a process for, well, who speaks for the club? How do you manage the situation? And how do you get help? And I think the other thing to point to is in, in this era that to be able to point people to support helplines as well. And we've, we've all encountered that in the, in, 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 in our clubs as well, you know, the, the, the young, young person self-harm and suicide as well. It's just a huge issue and being, being sure to point to support and so on. And you all saw over the weekend the death of, of that uh, young Gaelic football player in, in, in Sligo, Red, Red Ogo Murphy, uh, RAP. It's just awful. So it's just to be able to deal with situations like that as a club and how you respond. The other thing that I mentioned to already is the power of delegation and getting help. I think it's important that if you're trying to be a PRO and be a one-person one team, you're going to struggle unless you've got a, this is your full-time job, which I don't think it is for, for any club officer. The advantages of delegation and how to delegate. And it's about trusting people and, 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 and but keeping an eye on things as well. And so if you're saying to somebody, listen, can you manage a particular account for us? And that sometimes happens where you might have a, a younger member who might be very proficient in something like Twitter and say, listen, can you manage that for us? And listen, you, you're heading off to the event this weekend. You're going up to the, to the Nationals. Can you get the photographs and put them up live on, on Instagram or on, on Twitter and just keep us posted? And just make sure that they are doing it and they're doing it properly and not doing anything uh, out of the way. And fundamentally, that ties back to the whole area of good governance. And it's really about getting the message out there and showing that your club and, and your club is well run and you're getting the message out there about how good athletics is. And it's part of being the PRO, as Shane points out, is one of the four key officers in the club alongside the, the chairperson, the secretary and the treasurer. They probably are the four most important people in terms of actually running your club. I mean, a lot of people take on responsibilities for, for the very necessary thing. And the reason why we're involved in athletics is getting, getting athletes uh, competing, running, going, and fundamentally that, that is obviously the priority. But our, a well-run club obviously leads to very successful um, athletics as well. So that's why we try to promote that one. So it's really about promoting good governance, leading, controlling, being accountable, working effectively, and behaving in an ethical and integrous matter, manner so that when things go wrong, that you, you know, you've done things the right way. And I think that's the important thing. So that, that just kind of sets the scene for what the general role of the PRO um, is. And I, I'm going to now maybe uh, call on Tomás uh, to say a few words, and then we might take questions at the end if everyone's okay with that. Tomás, are you okay for me to continue to share? Yeah. yeah. Please, Dave, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, so. Awesome. Yeah, that's good, Dave. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for the opportunity and the invitation to talk um, on behalf of Killarney Valley AC, and it, it's hopefully we can share some ideas. So I suppose just first of all, I'll give you a bit of background. Um, as you can see from the picture there, we do have our own facility, and that facility we completed in um, uh, late 2020, um, and it's provided us with the motivation to... Um, have to, I suppose, become very current in our community because we have a debt hanging over our heads 
uh, in order to build a facility. So that then, I suppose, means that our club needs to be um, very proactive in the community in, in inviting in new members to make sure that the facility is used in the right way. Um, and that does require, I suppose, us to start thinking from a marketing perspective as well and marketing our sport and marketing our club. So not only do we have the intrinsic motivation that just comes from the love of the sport, we've got the extrinsic motivation of having to repay that debt as quick as we can to be very current in our community and how we present into our community. We, we have a hashtag and our hashtag is KVAC on the rise. And what's interesting is when we started pitching that out there, and you'll see that a lot in our social media, um, the local journalists definitely cottoned on to that pretty quickly. Um, who we are from a PRO team, it isn't just one person doing the job. Um, the PRO in our club for many, many years is a lady called Breed Stack. Um, Breed does an awful lot of good work in liaising with the local media in the more traditional way of putting notes about results and just updates in the traditional notes that will go into the local communications. Um, myself and Jordan Lee, and also with Bree dipping into it as well, run the social media. So again, it isn't just one person doing all of the communicating. We do chat to each other around what is going out into the public arena. And we do then, um, I suppose, listen to the voice of the athletes through Jordan. He's one of our track and field athletes. Um, and we do listen to what they would like us to be portraying as well. So it is very much a team effort. Um, so thanks, Dave. You want to move on to the next slide for me? So just a bit of background on the club and the trends. Um, so you'll see 2019, our club membership was 156. 2020, pandemic hits. Membership slides back a little bit, just like everybody else. Um, we did manage to finish our athletics facility at the end of 2020. So, of course, there was going to be an increase in our, in our membership. So our membership, we set ourselves a goal to have our membership at north of 200 by 2021, so we achieved that by one. Um, so that's that we're a, a, an achievement that we were proud of. 2022, things have really taken off. So we've got a membership currently of nearly 240, and we reckon by the summertime, we're going to be up to 250, 260 members because inquiries are coming in all of the time. Well, what's interesting is, despite how active we are within communicating in our local community and how, um, I suppose, noticed our social media has gotten, it's still surprising in the local community around how many people don't use social media, how many people aren't reading the local communications and are just stumbling across us. So again, I suppose don't underestimate that as well, um, that not everybody is using the type of platforms that you might decide to use. Thanks, Dave. So as regards our social media and Shane referred to it earlier on, um, we are very, I suppose, focused on the messages that we want to deliver in our social media that is all about promoting the athletes, is about all promoting the club and promoting the sport. Um, but also we have a marketing hat on when we are communicating externally, again, because we want to attract in um, brands that might want to be associated with us that will help us out with the debt, which I'll talk about later. And then will also maybe help us out when the debt is gone, when we do want to maintain our facility and we do want to keep growing the sport and grow the numbers participating in our sport to the levels that we think should be right for a town like Killarney. But our simple rule is every post or article, it either puts our relationships locally up or down. And again, the relationships with our members as well. So with any of the communications, like you, we've just got to be very, very sensitive to make sure that things never remain the same, that we always need to be moving forward. And we definitely don't want a situation where we're moving backwards. So we choose wisely with what we want to say. And we think of, well, can this post or this newspaper article end up turning into a complaint or ending up upsetting somebody? So we're already thinking about that before we engage. And that's where the, the joint effort comes into play. So again, it isn't just one person's idea influencing what's going out into the community. Thanks, Dave. Okay, so influencing the local journalists, and maybe influencing is the wrong word, but building relationships with them where the narrative of what's being said about the club and about the athletes and how we, the PROs, manage to make sure that the message that we want delivered is delivered in whatever articles are being written. And our starting point is the local relationships that Breed has forged with 
the local newspapers, the Killarney Advertiser and the Killarney Outlook. I'm sure there's similar communications in every town and city in Ireland where um, the ability to get full page articles in those news publications we've managed to do over the past 18 months or so. But what we've noticed is when the narrative in those articles that are done are appealing to an audience beyond the traditional that regional press starts to pick up the articles, but also then national press picking up the articles. So what I've got in that slide, I've got examples there of um, articles from the local press. The one there that says Carrie's, Carrie's fastest ever woman was about an athlete of ours that actually won a medal in the National Senior Indoor Championships um, recently. Uh, and again, that was done in the local press, but was written in a very, very specific way that the people that aren't athletics people when they were reading it in the community could relate to what Sarah had achieved. So for instance, it wasn't just about putting the time that she ran in the 60 meters into it of 7.39 seconds. We put the kilometers per hour that she hit at the 32 meter marker for sprint. So again, when your local person whose sole focus is Gaelic football is reading that article, they might look at athletics a little bit differently having seen how, how many kilometers an hour Sarah was hitting. Um, the other articles you see there are in the national press. The Irish Times picked up on an article about our athletics track. Um, there's an article in there about Jordan Lee and his, and his quest for the Tokyo Paralympic Games. But again, the messages that were being delivered in all of those articles were very much relating back to the club's ambition, the ambition of supporting the athletes, but also what the sport can do for people. So again, we're always very consistent in delivering those messages in any of the articles. Um, thanks, Dave. So what sort of social media do we use? Uh, Facebook has been in place for the club for seven years or so. We have a following of two and a half thousand and we're never hung up on how many likes that we get on an article that we publish because I'm sure lots of people just read an article and then move on to the next one. But what we do know is the community are reading our articles. Um, in Facebook, we'd use it quite a lot for sometimes paid promotions if we're doing something that um, is involved in generating revenue for, again, the benefit of the club and the benefit of the athletes. Uh, we know that we're getting about 20,000 interactions on any post that we would do um, in any one month. And then when we put maybe something into that, that boosts the post as well, we get considerably more. And we do manage to generate a lot of revenue from the activity on Facebook. Um, Instagram, we're only on at about a year. We have 660 followers. Um, in the first quarter, we had 21,000 engagements. And the age profile is very different, though, between Facebook and Instagram is what we've noticed. Um, the age profile on Instagram is 18 to 35. The, the profile on Facebook seems to be 35 plus. So, but we are consistent across both platforms on what we communicate. We tend to use a mixture of video and photos in the posts. And again, that's from having had conversations with the athletes in our club and Jordan maybe giving us a perspective of what a 20 or 21 year old is looking at. We use app, particular applications um, at, that are free to download. Um, to help us put together some nice material, we use Canva, which is an app that we use for flyers and for promotional material for both Instagram and Facebook. And then for editing a lot of the videos or editing together ways that the photos are presented, we use an app called OneShot. Again, we, we weren't experts on these in any way, shape or form, so we were self-educated. So it's easy enough to bring yourself up to speed on them. So they're worth looking up if you're not using them already. Um, a website, we built our website a year ago. The motivation for building the website, again, was just to have a consistent place where um, things like training times could be uploaded. And again, the links from the website could be put into the social media consistently. And it's always a good place to direct people back to where, again, there's consistent information like about how to join the club. We've recently started experimenting with writing articles within our website so that we've got a record of them forever, as opposed to putting a record on something on social media, and then you got to search for it retrospectively. So we started experimenting with using our, our website on that. But where our website has begun very, very valuable to us is we're able to build into our website booking links for our Couch to 5K program, which is great for engaging with the community, onboarding new members, but also generating revenue to help us invest back into the club. Um, we've got summer camps that are very, very successful as well, that we build the booking system into our website. And again, all those links are very easy to do, uh, but we've been very much self-educated on that also. 
Okay. Um, thanks, Dave. If you want to move on to the final slide, the, the, this one I think is a real important one, which which kind of leads to what we're talking about of trying to remain current in our community and onboard new members, but also being motivated by trying to pay down the debt in our facility so that it's sustainable into the future. We think of our club as not just being a club, but it has also evolved into a brand. But the word brand is actually feedback that we've received back from people in our community where they were congratulating us by saying, guys, you know, we're spotting your stuff everywhere. We're spotting all the articles. We want to start helping you out. We can see that your athletes are having great success, but we can also see that your club isn't just about high performing athletes. So again, the messaging in our social media would be very much around diversity and inclusion, around making sure that our female athletes and our male athletes are getting an equal platform. And we would be very overt in calling that out. So, I, you know, we're not shy in doing that. On the slide are just some examples of some of the brands that, that, that have helped us out over the, over the period of time. Um, and there's a variety of those brands and even more of them in the background that, that, that will be doing stuff with us into the coming months and into the new year as well. So I suppose don't be shy in um, being very overt and pushy with some of the stuff that you're talking about. If your club is genuinely living these things, lots of corporates and lots of businesses in your community will relate to that and will want to be involved. So that has been our very, very recent experience. So Dave, you want to go on to the final slide? Just the final slide is just our platforms. If you want to take a look at them, that's the link to our website. That's the link to our Facebook page and the link to our Instagram. So if you want to see what we're doing, and I'm sure many of you are doing something very, very similar at the moment to what we're doing. And indeed, we're looking at other clubs as well and trying to learn from other clubs also. So we definitely don't have it 100% cracked, but we are definitely generating momentum in our community. And we're certainly seeing that in the mixture of people that are joining our club. And again, the types of people in our community that want to support us and that have spotted the sport of athletics as being something that they should be involved in more and can give an awful lot more again than just high performance. So Dave, thank you for that. Yeah, th thanks Megan for that, Tomas. Just stop sharing there. Um, our final speaker tonight, or sorry, our final club officer speaker tonight is um, Michelle Ryan, who's from uh, Gore NAC and um, has filled the role of club PRO for the last number of years. I won't say how long, Michelle. I'll let you talk about that. So if you want to take over there, Michelle. That's great. Thanks very much, Dave. And um, well done, Tomas. That was um, very insightful. There's a few things even there I think I could learn from that. Um, so I'm going to be talking about internal communication only. I'm just going to share my screen with you now. Um, I should have it here. Has that come up for people? Has that come up? Sorry. Not yet, Michelle, no. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Um, Dave, you might be on sharing duties again. <laughs> Just working for us earlier, so no, clear. Hold no on. chance to get a break. <laughs> Just one moment. I'll... You're all right, Michelle. Take your time, Michelle. Yeah, it seems to have just shut itself down, so okay. That's okay. All right, policies now reopen. Um, okay. But yeah, great. That was uh, great from yourself there, Tomas. Very insightful. And uh, yeah. I love all the apps that you guys are using for creating your socials. They're fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> it's been lovely to watch the, like them come up on Instagram feed. They're very, very nice. There you go, Michelle. Um, yeah, so that's up now. Thanks, Ava. Um, so, <laughs> um, it's actually, I, I use quite a, a lot of the same apps as used to us. So that was interesting to see them pop up as well. Um, so internal communications. Um, what we're going to talk about is what worked for Gorn, Gorn Athletics Club. And you can see if that could possibly work for yours as well. OK, um, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of background into the club itself. Um, so. Gorn AC was founded in 1982. It's based in Gorn in County Kilkenny, but it's open for members from all surrounding areas in Carlow and Kilkenny. Some members can be based in Dublin or in Cork or Galway or even abroad due to work and college commitments. Um, members 
can join from the age of seven, seven years of age, and we don't really have any upper age limit. And our oldest member at the moment um, oh. recently completed at the Leinster Indoors um, in the over 70 men's 400 meters, and he actually placed third. So we're very proud of that achievement. Um, I myself as a juvenile in the club from 1984 to 1993, and then I returned as a parent in 2014 and rejoined as a member in 2015. Um, so I just want to talk about, there's a few things that, that I want to talk to you about, and they all kind of link back together. Um, so the club committee um, at the time when I arrived in, in 2015, they, there was a small committee at the time, including Dave, um, and they took on many roles. So there was three main roles at the time, the chairman, the secretary and the treasurer. And each of those people probably took on more roles as well, but they weren't actually defined, I think, at the time. Um, the committee then had an AGM. So I had just arrived in and the committee had an AGM and they invited all the parents to go. Um, and they had a presentation of the achievements of the club throughout the year. And they also launched the website, which I have here, just a, um, a picture of it. Um, the meeting itself was very uplifting and it was very positive. And um, at that point, they were asking for people to come on board and to help out the club. So um, in 2015, the following year, I was brought in as PRO. Um, uh, I didn't really know what I had agreed to undertake. OK, um, the role that I was told what was included in short was race reports, messages to club members, update the website and social media, take photos at event and attend a few meetings. Um, I had I had the I had a few skills to do that, so I felt you know wouldn't be too much of a big job. Um, I was wrong. Um, I studied, had studied graphic design in college and also multimedia. So I kind of had experience there in the area of photography and I was also good at technology. So that came in handy. Um, I was lucky at the time when I came in that the website, this website was completely set up. Um, everything was there and it was in WordPress, which is very easy. Um, if you have a kind of good computer skills, it's easy to update. Um, for people who are not good on at technology, there is ways to set it up so that it's easy for you to update and add things as well yourself. Um, <clears throat> at the same time, um, Instagram and Facebook were connected to this and they were also connected to each other. So if you post in one area, you post on both. And then Twitter was um, looked after by Dave Denise and still is because I just never took that off him. <laughs> Left it with him. Um, at the time, um, the members, like I can't remember exactly the number of members at that particular time, but I do know that the, the over a period of time, the members increased from about 80 to 300 and it was fairly dramatic, I think it was in within kind of a year or two. So that kind of brought the problems. OK, um, and that was juvenile and senior members. So with that came lots of challenges. And that was when we um, really needed a PRO to come in specifically as opposed to letting other people kind of deal with it as, as well as dealing with their own um, jobs. Um, so as the members increased, things became difficult and they, we continued to um, ask people for help. So we needed extra coaches, um, we needed new committee members, and then we needed to work on how we were going to communicate internally. Um, so at the time we were trying to keep um, 10 juvenile athletes to per, per coach, so we got a, 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 quite a lot of coaches to come on board and help out with that. Um, roles were defined in more areas, so there was a competition secretary as well, assistant treasurer, assistant PRO, child protection officer, and that was to help reduce the workload of the existing committee at the time. Um, and there was also, um, we set up committees to deal with other things so if we had a road race we had a committee for that or the couch to 5k committee and then if we were hosting cross-country events um that that would be taken on by another committee again to reduce the workload of the people that were already doing it um committee members are always involved but maybe we're able to lean on other people as well so that worked really well um and then internal communication was something that we needed to look at because there was a few problems with it um club messages at the time we were using a paid messaging system and you were only allowed so many words. So really you might just message the basics and then direct them to the website. So they would have to go somewhere else to actually get the full information. Um, we were also posting information onto our website 
um, we were also posting private onto we we're post posting onto a private Facebook group, um, so people had to join up to that. Um, we were also using WhatsApp groups for events, for teams, for competitions, for committees, for coaches. So as you can see from the slide here beside the picture of your phone, it literally was hopping to the point that it was nearly broken because you had so much messages and so much information coming in all different directions. And at times my phone was hot from the use. So, you know, and I think most of the main committee members had the same problem. Um, there was people texting and messaging from all directions and you kind of felt you had to be on everything and you really couldn't keep on top of all of that. So we needed to streamline it in a particular way. Um, some, some members also would only operate via private messages because they maybe weren't on Facebook or they didn't have uh, like WhatsApp and didn't want to connect with it. So all those challenges were there for us. Um, so what we decided to do, we needed something that would allow us to have a smooth, smooth communication between team leaders, coaches, members and guardians all on one platform. And we also wanted to take the hard work out of teamwork because we knew we had a good committee together, but we were all getting overwhelmed with so much communication, but yet not in one place. So the solution turned out to be Spond. So Spond is a message, uh, a messaging app, I suppose. I'm going to um, talk about it now, but I just want to highlight that I do not work for Spond, but you will think I do, okay, because everything I say from here on is saying how great the app is, okay. Um, so what did Spond provide us? Um, it provided, and this is directly from their website, because it's the easiest way just to explain it, to invite members to practice games or other activities. And you can customize that in any particular way that you want. And I'm going to show you um, in a little bit, um, just a snapshot of what that would entail. Um, you can share information, including files, photos, and you can have polls. So you can even give them like PDFs and things like that. So if there was a competition, um, you would be able to just share directly that PDF to them. You can send private messages or create group conversations so people can comment back on to messages if you want or not you can um, select that as well and then the good thing about the platform is that um, you can use it on your phone tablets and on the web so you can actually if people don't have the app on their phone they can also have it um, on their computer so they can email responses as well so it just gives lots of options and you're hoping that you're capturing everyone with that um, how Spawn works. Um, so number one, the athlete guardian registers with the clubs, that's separate to Spawned. And then um, they are prompted at that point, and that's by us, that's done through, through our website. They're prompted by Gorn AC to download Spawned. And on it, we are quite clear in saying that Spawned is our only method of communication. Um, so once they sign up, to spond and just if you see the image there beside it that's one that we made up which gave them all the information including the codes and everything that they need to sign up and we were trying to make it as visual as possible so that they would be able to um, access it without much problem or having to contact someone to help them to do that so that was another thing um, once they signed up on the app itself, it would then contact um, an, an administrator. So that could be me, the PRO, or it could be anyone else that you allow that permission to be an administrator. Um, and they request on the app, it requests and can they join? So the club administrator assigns the parents at this point then to the relevant group. So the way we have it set up is we've divided into age categories. Some of them are group categories and some of them are specific like under eights or under nines. Um, and this, became helpful for us later on when we were having specific competitions or specific events that you needed people to go to. You knew exactly what um, athletes were in that age, age category. Um, the athlete, number four, the athlete or guardian will then automatically receive training invites and has access. So once you've accepted them into a group, they automatically get everything that they need um, there and they can see posts and everything, even ones that have been um, posted in the past, okay? Um, so just next, sorry. okay, sorry, I might have jumped to there, yeah, so this is just the interface, now I know it's a tiny little bit blurry, but um, that's kind of good a little bit as well, if once you download it yourself, you'll be able to see everything very clear, but pretty much we have all these different training groups, okay, and different things that are different events that are coming up, um, here we have currently, say, 
today's um, events that are coming up. So that's two different training sessions. Well, it's Wednesday and Friday training session. On those, um, I'll show you a closer view in a, in a few minutes and you can see a little clearer, clearer, but it also has scheduled events that are coming up. So you can automatically schedule um, training for the year. OK, and that will just constantly um, each week, it will just repeat. And if you need to delete it or cancel it, it's no problem. It's quite easy to to do that. Um, but it just took the hassle out of having to do that every single week and, and remember to do that as well. Um, so just on the next slide, then a little bit closer, you can see it a bit more detail. I do say training groups, but it's actually events there um, you can see coming up. Um, if you select on these different items on the menu, these are lots of different things that you can do as well. So you can check all your events, which is what we're currently on. Um, you can see posts um, that have been, this is for creating a post, but this would be for um, checking posts, payments and polls. So I'm gonna talk about the two of these. So payments is the only option that we currently don't use because that's where you get a charge so other than that it's completely free you don't you can use payments if you want people to register your club or if you want them to make single payments um if they're purchasing merchandise or something like that but really there is a there is going to be a charge um on like they will take something from you for for that okay so that's your own choice and then polls um is another way of getting information from um parents um you know, if you ask them a question, you can get yes or no or whatever you'd like. So it's kind of a good way of interacting with people. Um, so here with, say, for example, this on the 6th of April, we have under 11 to under 18 Wednesday athletics training. So it's just saying what time it starts at. It's it will tell you in there what members are invited. Um, it will also say the number that have accepted. So it's quite low currently. Um, this was earlier today. So 17 had accepted, eight had declined to go, and then 87 were currently unanswered. So that's quite a large number. And you'd be hoping before training that they would all um, uh, accept to go. Um, so this would come up in um, the parents view. So if I show you, this is a parent view. So everything is all in there. They have events, they post payments and posts. It's the same menu as well. And they would just get the information, for example, all the events that are coming up and then they can accept or decline. And that's how we know they're training. Um, we had this introduced before COVID. So this became very helpful for us because we needed to know exactly who was coming to training. We needed everyone to have a health questionnaire completed. It. So we, we had options to do that. We, there was um, a link that you could provide within the app. They could click the link, link and have it done in just a couple of minutes. So that worked really well for us and we were happy that we had it set up in time. So just moving on now to effective communication. Um, everything that we put out, we felt it was just very important that there was one message going out. And we felt that um, if there was a lot of messages coming from everywhere, then people didn't really know what they were supposed to be following. So that, that's why it became the job of only the PRO was to send out information, um, but also certain people were usually on the committee were assigned administrator role as well. So they obviously, if um, the PRO couldn't do it or for a particular reason, they could send out their own as well. So it wasn't completely exclusive. Um, but the point of each of the messages that we are posts that we would have sent out to um, members would be we would be tr we would try to cover all of these things so a very clear message um, correct message so make sure all the information provided is correct um, on spawn there is an option to edit a message after you've sent it so that it can update if you've made a mistake if you've added the wrong time or the wrong date um, that you can update that so at least the message um, can be sent out correctly um, the complete message so absolutely everything that you you need to tell them that you have it all in there um, and precise so I know I've said that many times it's nearly like the same thing clear correct complete and precise but um, sometimes that is actually quite difficult to do it's quite difficult to make sure that they're getting exactly the right information and this is where the most problems occur if they don't get the right information so we felt that was really important um, so also in for effective communication we felt like reliability was really important because if they didn't get the information on time or if they didn't know the information was going to come at a particular time then they weren't prepared so it was important that they knew that yes training is on next week um, or that that competition is coming up at that particular time um, so we just felt that that was really important that they could trust us that they could trust that we were going to provide them with the information in a timely manner um, 
We also had to consider when we were writing any posts or anything, the um, consideration of who was receiving it. So we wanted to make sure our tone was nice and it was friendly and we were inclusive and we were always promoting the club in the best light possible. Um, and finally then just like our tone as well that we just made sure that it appeared that um like whatever it really was that we were trying to say to them was just to make sure to encourage them to come and to encourage them to participate in whatever it is that we were posting about okay um, and then just lastly um all we we just felt that there was a lot of benefits to having effective communication and we've seen it over the last um three years um that we have been all the committee have um had a chance maybe to take a breather because you 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 don't have to respond so much to everybody um if you have 300 people in the club and if everyone is looking for information it is a lot of things that you have to um, respond to and sometimes you know you can be very tired and maybe um nerves can be a little bit frayed so this just helped everybody to just be able to relax a little bit and just to focus on their own particular job so we just felt um that it was really important because it helped to keep the members infor informed of up and coming events um so attendance to competition and tr and training improved um you weren't left short at a cross-country event with just two athletes thinking that you were going to have six so that just helped in that sort of area and other that's just one example and other areas um, the messages we just want to make sure they're very consistent and that reduced the chance of miscommunication and it also felt that like every member felt like they were important and they were included and they were getting the exact same information as other people because sometimes if someone heard on a private message something was coming up but then someone else didn't you know people feel like oh am i not important enough so we're just trying to make sure that everybody in the club felt that they were as valued as as each other um also um Another benefit was allows members to interact with the club and to build up rapport with the club. And this we've seen is really important, especially when we need volunteers to do things for us. Um, so we had um, an All-Ireland event and we needed about, I don't know, 45 or 50 volunteers to help out at that. And, you know, we really didn't have a lot of problem. We didn't have to private message anyone begging them to come. We just got all the volunteers came on board. So we were really happy with that. And we felt that because communication was so clear that that was another way that it was working really well for us. Um, Clubs with, per this has been seen, but clubs with personal engagement retain more members. We have many members who have left and who have returned. And um, even when I was younger, you know, I did participate in the club and there wasn't a lot of communication. Pretty much we were dropped down to training and we were collected an hour later. Um, and we also went to competitions on a bus and were gone eight hours and were collected off the bus um, at the end of it. And we, but we didn't require as much information as people require now. So mostly kids are not dropped and sent. Parents are involved and they participate more. So they have questions. So, you know, it's important for us to make sure that we're answering them so that they are seeing our club in a positive light and they will return, even if the um, athlete needs to take a break for a period of time, that they will return when the time is right for them. Um, club members are consistent, are continuously updated about the club's short and long term goals. And this also helps just for us to keep um, parents and athletes um, more invested in the club and they feel um, very proud of the club and they feel like they want to help us move forward with the club. Um, meetings are more productive as members are better informed and prepared. So we had um, a meeting just recently with um, parents and at that we've just given them updates of what was coming up in the future um, in the next couple of months just for the track and field season. And we were given them opportunities to ask questions at the end, but they pretty much kind of knew um, most of mostly of what they needed to know. So there wasn't a whole lot of questions. There wasn't any confusion and everyone is ready for action for the track and field season season and this really helped us to save time especially after training sometimes if you don't inform parents they might keep you for 10 or 15 20 minutes afterwards asking questions so this was another really good thing um the first place that members receive information is spawned so constantly if if we do get lots of questions we just go oh have you checked spawned because it can be the answer 
for them. Everything is up there. And if it's not on Spond, then there's a link to say, well, it's on the website. So if, especially if it's a permanent piece of information, um, such as training times or um, past results or whatever, it's all up on the website. They can go have a look there as well. So, but it's just really good to have all the information in one place and it's really easy then and streamlined for us as a committee and as even for the coaches. Um, so just, oh, sorry. The last thing then was just, if you're looking for information about communicating and communicating, um, there was, and communications in general, there was just two areas that I kind of would keep an eye on. And Ava maybe might be talking about these in a second, but one is just Athletics Ireland, um, just have a communication with children PDF. So it just gives you lots more information there that we don't really have time to discuss tonight. And then Sports Ireland also has a good communication plan. So if you're coming up with your, a, a plan for um, your club, that might be an area that you could check out and see, would it be helpful for you? Um, and that's it. So back to you, Dave. Thanks. I'll stop sharing. Thanks, Mia Michelle. Thanks for that. And a lot of questions on the, on the chat on that. But before we go to that, Michelle, we're still seeing your screen there. Thanks. Um, I'm going to hand over to Ava, who might want to say a few words before we, we go to the, you know, those questions on the chat. And I'm sure there's a few want to ask questions as well. Ava, over to you. Thank you very much, David, and thank you very much for allowing me to jump onto the call this evening. Um, I am a media and communications executive here in Athletics Ireland. It's a new role to Athletics Ireland. And basically, I'm similar to you guys. I'm the PRO for Athletics Ireland. A lot of my job revolves around social media of Athletics Ireland um, and what we put out to to media, be it, you know, doing interview pieces with high performance athletes or trying to get, you know, club results or national event results into local papers and you know helping you guys and fostering that relationship between athletics and local regional and national and even international media so that is kind of my role a little bit about my background um i come from a very corporate environment so i seen bmw was in um thomas's slides i did work for them for a, t a period of time um but basically what I wanted to come on this evening just to say is to introduce myself um, and the new role that's within Athletics Ireland. And also I'm Shane will share my direct email um, with you guys in the follow up email just so you have my contact details. Um, we are always trying to promote you guys on the ground, your clubs, the success stories that are going on there. So if you have like Templemore AC, um, John Dwyer um, was fantastic and he shared what was going on down there with me and we pushed that out to local and regional and national media. Um, it was picked up. We pushed it out across our social media channels. Um, we're doing pieces with, you know, up and coming athletes, um, you know, our older athletes who ha may have had success in in their 20s and 30s and are now coming back into their sport coming back to the sport in their retirement years and um, we're trying to push their stories out to media and um, we're also offering you guys who maybe are new to social media and want to promote your own club social channels by we've created the saturday takeover well brought back the saturday morning takeover black or Black Rock AC. Um, they held their first Saturday takeover there a couple of weeks ago um, and it went very well. They found traffic coming to their website, new followers coming to their social channels um, and also sitting down with them and kind of going through you know, different types of content and um, the vitalness of a good hashtag um, and just little tips and tricks about, you know, apps like Canva, there's also Lightroom, which is another good one, um, Adobe Spark, um, going through those kind of platforms that they can avail of um, and just how to put it together, kind of going through that, the two documents that uh, Michelle mentioned are really, really good and filled with information and really helpful points. So, so I, I would definitely, definitely strongly encourage everyone, everyone to go and have just a brief read, read. Um, or even if you want to pop me an email or jump on a call with myself I've no problem I can go through anything with you um but I won't keep any keep any more time um, I'm sure there's loads of questions so I think the best way to kind of learn is through questions so I'll hand back to Dave and he can fire away thanks Ava for that and great to have that support um yeah just to say thanks again to Tomas and Michelle for sharing their stories 
and providing very different perspectives of the role of the PRO. Um, and obviously, as Michelle said, there are many different club management platforms out there. Spond has worked very well for our club, but I know people have referred to Club Zap and there's, there's many other apps out there as well. But it shows the power of managing the internal communication. That's probably the key message and how to make it effective. So thanks again to Michelle and uh, obviously to the master of the brand himself, Tomas Griffin, um, came back on the rise. So well, well done to Tomas on that one. Um, so we've had a few questions in the in the chat. Um, Shane, I don't know if you want to talk maybe through some of those questions, or will we just maybe see does anyone want to raise their hand or turn on the camera or say something, <laughs> whatever they want to do. We're, we're happy to take. Yeah, so I, I think most of the questions uh, that came through the chat were kind of answered in the chat. Um, one of them was just asking Tomas, are there uh, sites set to public or private? So maybe Instagram, Facebook, and so uh, Tomas said that there are uh, there the settings are on public, uh, but that. Uh, uh, one of the clubs was at Lucan or someone um, were having problems with, you know, getting strange messages and stuff like that from, and that, that's the problem with having an open page on Facebook or Instagram, you know, whether it's there are bots, you know, like robots sending just generic messages or whatever it is, people trying to target your club. So look, I don't know if there's any effective methods for avoiding that, you know, just make sure they're going into the ignore bin or whatever, you know, and there try to get, are... you know, Control, there are controls on Facebook now and on Twitter that you can that you can avail of to limit who can comment, who can join your private communities, who can you know tag you and post and that kind of thing. There are now review tools that weren't there before, um, such as child safeguarding ones as well that are on Facebook. Instagram are a little bit slower to kind of bring them on stream, um, and Twitter. Twitter is a minefield and um, there are some tools that are on Twitter but again it kind of depends on what you want to use the social media for to communicate to the general public or to your club members um deadly thank you Ava so if anyone are having problems with that you know maybe uh get in touch with Ava or whoever and uh you know she might be able to like, give, give you a hand um another one came from Colin and Luke and is just about spawn so I think we might have answered that as well Michelle uh, can everyone in the club see see all communication to all sections of the club or is it confined to the section you're in? So uh, I think you would, do, do you want to, I, I had said there that you can set up like a juvenile and adult section fit for life and they're separate but can also be joint. Yeah, so you can, send general, out, yeah. you can send messages out to everyone or you can specifically select which, which groups you want to send it to. And then another thing that I should have said was that um, you, everyone can see each other um, but you cannot see the details of the other of the other people, so you cannot see their emails or their telephone numbers. And then the um, the parents or the, the members have the right to switch that off, even from administrators. Usually, um, if if they've switched it off from administrators, you just see an email, so you don't get a telephone num like number either. So that's really good from like a GDPR point, you know that that, that yeah, absolutely information is not available for everyone to see. Okay. Um, and then I don't think there was too many other, unless anyone had any that they wanted to ask. Oh, uh, Sheila O'Byrne, has anyone any experience on issuing fortnightly newsletters via email to members, effective or not? Who wants to? We did do it and it is effective. Yes, it is effective, but it's just yeah. very time consuming. And is, is that something that you can push out to respond, Michelle, potentially? Uh you could push it out to respond at the time we were doing it through MailChimp. So we had everybody in yeah. MailChimp and we were sending information out that way to them. Um, but you could just you could just create something, you know, a, a, like from any of the apps and download as a PDF and then you could link it to it. But we kind of felt it was better just to put everything up onto the website and then link to the website. So instead of actually sending an email. So it's the same idea, I suppose, in a way. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you're trying to generate uh, the the turnover through the website I suppose and not just someone reading a sheet of paper and then clicking out of it is kind of what you're saying there is it yeah. now we do uh like I try to do it regularly David laugh now but it never happened regularly enough so then it became quarterly that we would send a newsletter but then it's not like a lot of stuff happens in between so was it really that that useful so you know it's kind of drifted away a little bit since Spawn took over <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, 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 we normally send them out each week. It's, 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 it's on the Club Force, on the Club Force app. Uh, we can reuse. Um, look, in fact, that, that there would be a lot of repetition, a lot of repetition on from the from the social media and that. But uh, we do kind of. Uh, we, 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 we used to try to, in the in the previous regime, used to go out on Monday with uh, myself and 
the other guy took it over and he said we'll push it out midweek just give us time to kind of get stuff in from the weekend because it was it was being rushed out and there's really nothing going on there, but but we do kind of you know, Tuesday evening or Wednesday you know, and it's just yeah it's better because you can't actually get the weekend stuff onto it you know I suppose it, that's what you said there Colin's actually a good point that even if there is a bit of repetition on what's on your social media at least everyone that's in your mailing list is on the same page as to what's yeah. going on Facebook and you know if they mightn't be checking Facebook as regularly you know everyone is seeing all the content that's going up yeah it covers all bases really yeah yeah okay, excellent thanks for sharing that appreciate it yeah I'm a real believer and I've been working on it for about a week so now I'm going to show you how I grammarly okay here's my answer and I'm going to click through Grammarly suggestions in the right oh, someone's signing up for a subscription to Grammarly there I remember you that in college um so uh, any other questions guys or are we happy to uh to wrap it up anyone any uh, anyone want to put their hand up or uh, drop it into the chat okay tomas griffin is coming back into the into the waiting room look guys we'll wrap it up there um if you've got any questions either uh, reply them reply to my email i'll forward them to the guys and ava uh you know i'll share ava's contact details um if i can get a hold of the guys presentations if that's okay with them i might share them as well with uh with everyone that's come on and obviously the recording uh i'll just have a look at it maybe tomorrow morning and try edit it um, and just make sure all the editing on it is okay and then i'll push it out to you guys um but from uh you know at that is Ireland's point of view uh thanks a million to uh dave obviously for pulling together the session uh to moss and to michelle for like seriously professional presentations uh, you know, obviously massive uh, appreciation from us considering you guys are all volunteers, uh, you know, and they were very professional looking presentations and it's clear the amount of time that you put into the clubs and stuff like that. So uh, really, really thank you from our point of view and everyone on the call. Thanks a million for coming on because you guys have all given up pretty much an hour and a half on your uh, Wednesday. It is Wednesday, isn't it? Wednesday evening uh, to, to try and learn more about how to develop athletics in Ireland within your own clubs and your own communities. So. Uh, massive thanks and thanks a million to Ava for popping on as well and we'll make sure to get your contact details out so uh, we leave it there guys thanks a million any